Hey friends, how are you? Hope you're well. Sorry there was no video at the weekend. Um, this is Wednesday that I'm recording this. Um, I didn't get my laptop back till Sunday. And yes, they found me a new charger. And it works. <laughs> so I just didn't want to... Use, I know I'd said that I had a number of videos that were due to come out and that I'm going to film them, you know, today. Um, but I just didn't really want to use mum's laptop you know, mum's laptop, fill that up with video and have to deal with it, transferring it over. So I'm just going to leave it and just do it when I get my laptop back. So yeah, my laptop's back. I spent part of, so I went and picked it up Sunday morning, spent part of Sunday afternoon just putting various things back onto it. Like I'd cleared away like all my links to book stuff, emails and stuff like that. So I just put stuff back on. I have put the bare minimum back on actually. I've just put back on things that I know I really use and then I'm going to see from there and if there are ones that I you know use I think oh yeah I use that I'll put it back on but I'm maybe going to try and keep my my laptop as uncluttered with things as I possibly can we'll see how long that lasts um but yeah it is working it's okay I spent yesterday catching up and written uh book reviews so today's all you know video stuff so so the first week of March, I have had quite a good, um, oh, quite a good reading week. Hold on to shake. I've discovered, I've just seen a book I haven't, oh, I don't need to do it. No, it's good. It's okay. Brain just now. Yes, I have read another book, but it's a book that is for another project, so I'm not going to mention it. So, how many books have I read since the start of March? One, two, three, four, five. Five, five books, which is not bad. So, the first one is it started with a Vegas wedding. I'm just going to mention it. I will tell you more about that because I have a review video coming up. So that's that's fine. So that review video will be recorded after I've done this one. So here we go. So we then went on to A Guernsey Girl at the Shally School by Amy Fletcher. This is a fill-in to Eleanor M. Brent Dyer's Shally School series. I'm going to... So I think I might do a video actually about the Shally School series because, you know, but hey ho, but you'll find that in a minute. So this book, as I say, is set during the Second World War. Okay, so for those of you who are Shally School friends, for a Shally School readers, this is set in the time when they are living. The Shally School is based on the English Welsh border. Okay. So, so it comes after another fill-in called Peace at the Shally School. Um, so yeah, so that's kind of where this fits in. And if I go to the back here, um, let me see. Do they put the... No. They haven't put the fillers in on this lot, right, okay. Um, but it's kind of that period. So we meet Jacqueline. Now Jacqueline is, herself and her family live in sort of the village where, or near the village where the school is set. And um, she's, she's a boarder at the school. And it's just, so she is, she takes part, she's a prefect, so she takes and she takes her responsibilities really seriously. She is a dorm prefect as well. Um when they move herself and her, her mother and brothers moved from Guernsey, you know, because it was safer. Her one of her brothers and her father stayed in Guernsey and have, are living in Guernsey under Nazi occupation. One of her other brothers is also in now is the I think it's the RAF. Um, so she she ha need, they haven't heard from her father and brother or her you know serving her horse's brother. They haven't they haven't heard from him at all. Um, you know, throughout this book and it is quite a strain for for her. But she always tries to see the good side in things. Um, she. Th 
the Ravinius thing. I don't really want to spoil this because it, I don't think it's fair. But various things happen. So you've got they go out their guides and they do. They end up the guides end up helping people in the village um, to do things that you know they can't do. Um, there is an outing to Shrewsbury for the whole school. Um, there's some of the guides and rangers go on a walk. Uh, one of one of the main characters who you've seen from the very beginning of the Shelley School, Joey um, Maynard, as she is now, Joey Bettany, as she was before she married. Um, her young son is not well, uh, so there's that as well. Um, there is a lot that goes into it, and there they they have like I love the fact that they have hobby hobbies club, and the girls get together once a week and do their do their various hobbies, and there's the Charlie School always have once a year a big sale of work, but something happens that the sale of work can't happen. Um, so yeah, there are there is a lot going on in this. Um, as I say, at the back of it. Um, Jacqueline is involved in trying to make the best of the situation when the girls are lost in the fog and also in damage limitation in the aftermath of the flood. So, you know, there are lots of things that go on in here. It was a really well written. It was a great sort of fill-in. And I'm really glad to have got it added to my collection. I say I'm being very vague because I really don't want to, um, to spoil it. So I then went on and read, now this is an unabridged version of Mary Lou of the Shelley School by Eleanor M. Brett Dyer. Mary Lou is one of my favourite characters, I have to say. And I borrowed this from one of my, from my friend Alison, who is uh, an elderly neighbour up the road. And unfortunately, she became ill at the end of October and is now unable to live at home. She's going to have to, she's going to be going into a care facility. Um, so she said, look, any books that you want. And I thought, well, I'm going to borrow them just now and, you know, and read the ones that I want to read. So I decided I wanted to read an unabridged version of Mary Lou's. I'm going to read you the back. Mary Lou Trelawney, returning late to school owing to the death of her grandmother, finds a very odd new girl in the common room. Jessica Wayne seems to have a permanent black dog in her back. Joy Maynard, who knows the inside story for this, persuades Mary Lou to take a hand with her. And by half term, that canny, canny young woman has managed to get to the bottom of the trouble and help Jessica along the right path. How Jessica pulls herself together and, and how many thanks to evil, the evil doings of Emerence Hope, Mary Lou find herself is, involved, is nearly involved in a tragedy. Are all told in Mary Lou the Shelley School. However, all endings all ends happily and the school goes home for the Christmas holidays, thankful to know that it still has its one and only Mary Lou. So this is set when the school is in Switzerland. Um, the school moves, starts in Austria and then goes to England, England, Wales, and then back then back to Switzerland. It is a really good. This one is really good. Um, I really like the way that Mary Lou helps Jessica and makes her see things that you know from a perspective that she maybe wouldn't see it from. Um, Mary Lou uses her own experiences as part of this. Um, Mary Lou is one of these characters. She's been brought up by adults all her life, so is very, in many ways, very adult in her outlook, and talks in a more adult manner than you would find you know we normally expect um so yes it was really nice to read the unabridged version i have got the i've got the abridged version but i think i'm gonna so i have all the shelly school series some of them are abridged some of them unabridged and my plan is to try and get all of the the unabridged versions but you know we'll see then I borrowed another one from my friend, and that is called Before the Shally School, The Bettany's of Taverton High. So this book is set, for all you Shally School fans, this book is set before, the term before the Shally School starts. Um, brings in some characters that you will meet 
at the Shelley School in the beginnings. And I really liked this. This was just such a nice prequel. Do you have to have read the prequel to start reading the Shelley School? No, you don't. Um, you can start off with the School at the Shelley by Eleanor and Brent Dyer and you're going to be perfectly fine. It's just really nice that people have written, um, you know, uh, uh, you know, fill-ins. This, this one was written by Helen Barber, so I'll read the back to you. In a small town in the southwest of England, a young woman named Madge Bettany is facing an impossible dilemma. Her young sister Joey's poor health is a constant source of concern, and when her income mysteriously dwindles to almost nothing, the situation becomes acute since going out to work is not an option. How Madge and Joey pulled together in the face of adversity is the theme of this much-awaited forerunner to the Shally School series. This delightful new story by Helen Barber, author of The Shally School Headmistress, which is another fill-in, follows the fortunes of the Bettany family in the run-up to the founding of the Shally School. Meet the Bettany's old muddler of a guardian, find out what's special about the rector's cat, Discover why the third form and remove it at loggerheads and visit Joey and Madge by their own fireside. Family story or school story, read it and form your own judgment. So, this was beauty. Joey has, when she was younger, had pleural pneumonia that almost killed her. And it has left her very, it has left her with a weak chest. So, colds are, you know, pretty dangerous things for her. Um... She is your usual 12 year old. She wants to be doing things, but unfortunately she can't. And at times it, it annoys her. Um, I think that's probably putting it mildly, but yes, it does annoy her. And she's in some ways sick and tired of being seen as uh, an invalid. So we see, we see Joy at school. We see her friends and we just sort of, see life for Madge and Joey at home. Their Madge's twin brother Dick is out in India as in, with a forestry commission. <coughs> he is her twin and he has to come home. Their guardian was, I, I actually liked Guardy, I thought he was a really lovely character, he really was. And their aunt comes to visit, um, they have Sarah who is like their maid and she can be quite difficult she came from one of the aunts to help look after the family um but no i really really enjoyed the start of this because as i say we see we meet we meet meet people who will become prospective uh, pupils at the shally school so yeah so thoroughly thoroughly enjoyed that i also read a snowbound cowboy christmas by amanda rennie this was my first um, book by her, really enjoyed it. This is a, a, a Cherish, now is this Mills and Boone? Yes, it's a Mills and Boone Cherish. So, I will read the back. Jingle bells or wedding bells? Some people would have thought getting stranded at the Silver Bells Guest Ranch in Saddle Ridge, Montana for Christmas with the dreamy Dylan Slade was idyllic. But for real estate acquisitions expert Emma Sheridan, it's a disaster because Dylan is standing in the way of the takeover deal that could secure her promotion and her daughter's future. Dylan has no intention of selling, so why does he suddenly care so much about what happens to Emma and her unborn baby girl? How with a preterm labour scare and a serious storm conspiring to keep them so snowbound for Christmas, Dylan has two weeks to change her mind about her company's takeover and maybe even about him. I really liked this one. This was this was really good. I liked the to begin with. It was like conflict. Like I am Dylan. Like I'm not talking to you. I am not listening to your proposal. Why did my uncle want to sell to you? It's like his his uncle has passed and um he's taken over. The, he he was a joint owner of the ranch and but his uncle had decided that he was going to sell the ranch without sort of Dylan kind of knowing about him to this kind of conglomerate who want to basically raise it to the ground and you know build a new but Emma as she spends time at the ranch realizes well maybe actually that's not a good idea maybe what we need to do is just 
try and bring this ranch back into or update it a bit because actually it has a lot and the more time she spends there the more time she spends with Dylan and also getting to know the people who work there the more she can see ways in which to keep the ranch but to update it and to make it provide more things for their guests but can she persuade Dylan that that's the best thing to do rather than raise it to the ground? Can she persuade the people she works for that really that's what they should do? Or does she say to Dylan, right, okay, actually, I'll come in with you and let's run this together. And let's make the changes that we, that we think are going to be good together. Um, so I really, really liked it. I... I like the setting, I like the characters, I like getting to know the other characters who worked there and what they thought of being, you know, where they worked, etc. It was just, it was a really nice read and, you know, as I say, it's the first, I don't know if it's, a, if, it's, if it's part of a series, I am going to find out, but I, I really like the way Amanda Renee writes and I would definitely want to read more, more by her. So that's kind of what I've been, what I have been reading. What am I reading this week, I hear you ask? Well, on my Kindle, I am reading Kiss Me Under the Irish Sky by Karen Foley. This is a book for review um, from Tool Publishing. I am really, really enjoying it. It is a very good read, very easy, quick read, and I'm thoroughly, thoroughly enjoying it. I was out last Thursday. Mum and Dad and I went down to Hoyk to see my friend Jen and to take her out, our friend Jen, to take her out for, for lunch. And... While we were out, when we went for lunch, we went to this garden centre near Newton St Boswell's called Milestone. Really nice. Really nice lunch. And it's a nice wee, wee garden centre to walk around. I need some books. And I saw this one. Sleep and Meditations. To help tired minds unwind and drift off by Danielle North. Now, the I'm sorry, it was a cover buy. Okay, it was a cover buy. Because I just... And then I looked inside and... Hold on, I'll let you see. Um just lovely lovely calming illustrations and so it takes you through like little small um meditations that you can do every night before you go to bed i just read them um what i have done is you will see my diffuser there there was a diffuser recipe in the beginning of this and I've put that into my diffuser and I don't know if that's why I'm sleeping better but I am definitely I am sleeping and I sort of read one little meditation you know before I go to bed or while I'm in bed and I am just really enjoying reading it I will probably start maybe doing a couple of them you know just every now and again but it is really nice I have started also I do the the um, suggest a breathing exercise and I, I do that um, as well and that's really really good I am um, if you want to know uh, if you want to know what it is speak to me down in the comments and I'll I'll tell you about it so what else am I going what else am I reading this week I'm reading Ninth House by Lee Bardugo this is the very this is our very first adult novel it was recommended to me by um, a lady at Waterson's Fort Kinnaird where I do my most of my book shopping um, so it's really interesting so it's welcome to the ninth house Galaxy Alex Stern is the most unlikely member of Yeoman's freshman class a dropout and the sole survival of, survivor of a horrific unsolved crime Alex was hoping for a fresh start but her free ride comes with a catch. She has been tasked with monitoring Yale's secret societies, notorious haunts of the rich and powerful. Now there's a dead girl on campus, and Alex is the only person willing to look deeper, because the societies are far more sinister and extraordinary than, ever, than anyone ever imagined. They tamper with forbidden manage, magic, they raise the dead, and sometimes they prey on the living. I have got to page 65 so far and I am intrigued by it, okay? I am intrigued by it. I want to know what's happening and what, you know, I wondered whether, you know, it was made up, but no, there, is, there, there are secret societies at Yale. But what I also saw was 
Okay, you have the map of Yale. And as soon as I saw that, I don't know if this is the right quote, but for all you Gilmore Girls fans out there, do you remember the first day that Rory's, she moves to Yale and she goes, if I have any activities in old campus, I'm screwed, my map is torn? That was that was my immediate thought, you know, when I saw this map and I thought, if I've got any characters and, you know, I thought it was, you know, that just sort of immediately brought to mind. I don't know that I'm going to get major Gilmore Girl vibes from this, but I don't care. I'm just, I am enjoying it. It is, it, you know, as I get deeper into it, um, hopefully I will enjoy it more. So I'm counting this one as one of, as a book for, um, March Mystery Madness. The other book I did read was for March Mystery Madness as well, but it's also, as I say, for another project that, um, that I'm going on. It was called Buried in Cornwall. Um, so I, who was the author? Hold on. Tell me, I'll just, excuse me, two shakes. So yeah, that's it. Burned in Cor Buried in Cornwall by Jane Boletho. So, let's see, for another project that I will, I will be doing throughout the year and I will, you, <laughs> dads give me, you know, something else. So that's kind of, where that's coming but again so this will be my second book of for March Mystery Madness so that's really good I'm glad to sort of being able to do that but that's kind of what I've been what I've been reading over the the week and a bit since my my I didn't have my laptop um weather wise it's cold here at the moment we've got blue skies but I'm seeing the clouds roll in um I don't think hold on to the Oh, they are obscuring Fife. All right, okay. So it could be that we're we're we we may miss the snow. We're supposed to get snow, maybe not today, but tomorrow, and Friday. If we get any, I will I will probably I'll do a wee video, but because we don't normally get snow where we are in Scotland, um, very occasionally. So it will be if we get some, I will try and take a little video. But that's it for this video, friends. Um, hope you've enjoyed it. Please let me know down below what have you been reading. Are you participating in March Mystery Madness? Do any of the books I've talked about sound interesting to you? Um, what have you been doing? I'd love to know. But until my next video, friends, stay safe. Happy reading. Bye.